Hey everyone, this is Brady, the Game Dev Artisan. In today's video, we're going to continue our series on Godot Fundamentals. We'll be improving our collision detection as we'll be adding interaction with our tank and bullets. We'll be creating some additional interactable objects such as a crate, pickups, and walls to collide into. To get started, we can open our tank and expand our collision section in the inspector panel. We can look at our layers and masks. The layer section of a collision describes where a object belongs on which layer. For example, our tank can be set up on layer 1, and that's the layer it belongs to. And the mask layer will describe which objects we're looking for a collision to occur on. For example, a crate or a pickup. We can describe our layer names by selecting the ellipses and selecting Edit Layer Names. Here we can set up unique names of each layer. For example, layer 1 could be for our player. Layer 2 could be for any collectibles that we may want to pick up. Layer 3 could be for our world objects. It could be great for walls. It could also do things like destructibles. You may also want to set up a layer dedicated for your weapons or enemies as well. Once you've defined your layers, you can easily see on the layer and masking the name of each layer by hovering. For example, when we're looking at our tank, we may want it to be on the player layer. However, we don't want it to collide with itself. So we're not going to look for collisions on the layer with the player. However, we may want to collide with things like collectibles, or in our case, the world, for walls. We can set this up for our bullet as well. We open our bullet scene and expand the collision layer. We'll untick the player layer. We'll select our weapons layer. And for masking, we may want to check for collisions that occur world layer, the destructibles layer, and the enemy's layer. Now let's briefly cover setting up our new walls, crates, and pickup scenes. We've gone ahead and created a wall sprite, as well as a crate sprite, as well as a pickup sprite. You may also find those sprites that are available in our project repo, or as always, you can create your own custom sprites. Our crate scene will experiment with the rigid body 2D object. We'll add a sprite 2D, bring over our crate sprite, into the texture. From here, we also want our rigid body to also have a collision shape. And we'll simply use the rectangle shape 2D and align it to size. Let's rename our object to crate. And we'll open its collision section as well and adjust its layers. We'll go ahead and make our crate a destructible and we'll allow it to look for collisions with the player as well as weapons. We'll go ahead and save this scene in our scenes folder as crate.tscn. And we'll also add a script called crate.gd. Simplify checks, we'll be adding a class name of type crate. If we go to our tank, we'll also modify our tank.gd to ensure that we have a class name of tank. For our bullet, we we'll want to make sure it has a class name of bullet. And we'll go ahead and save those. Now that we've set up our crate, we can quickly set up our wall scene, which will be a type of static body 2D. For this, we'll also add a sprite 2D, and we'll set that to the wall sprite. Go ahead and rename that to wall. And for our wall, we'll also add a collision shape 2D. And this will also be a rectangle. We'll go ahead and save that as wall.tscn. Once again, we'll select our scene, expand the collision, disable the player layer. We'll set this to the world layer, and it won't be checking for any collisions on itself. And for our pickup scene, we will use an area 2D, add a sprite, assign its image, we'll add the collision shape of type rectangle 2D. We'll adjust its size. We'll rename this to pickup. Save that as pickup.tscn. And we'll also attach a script. For this, we'll give it a class name of pickup. Now, if we return to our world scene, we can begin by placing our walls and crates into this world adding a new tile map. Here we'll be taking advantage of some of Godot 4's features with the tile map where we can place object scenes inside of a grid layout. 
To do this, we'll add a new tile set. And under our tile set, we'll add a new tile that is of scenes collection type. Here, we'll just name this walls. And from here, we can click and drag our wall scene into our tile set. And under our tile map, on the right side, we'll add a new layer. We'll call this first layer walls. We'll create a second layer. It will be for our crates that we can call destructibles. And inside our tile map, with our walls layer selected, we can take our wall scene and we can paint it in. This allows us to snap our walls to a grid. Here we'll just outline our room to create a boundary. You can create additional patterns or mazes if you choose. Back to our tile set. Let's create a new scenes collection. We'll call this destructibles. And here we can bring our crate scene by going back to our tile map and selecting our destructibles. We can select our crate and we'll just paint some of these in. We can run a quick test. Before we even switch over, we can see that our crates have fallen out of the world. This is because our rigid bodies have gravity being applied to them. For gravity, it's managed under the project settings. If you enter the project settings and search for gravity, under our physics 2D, we have a default gravity and a default gravity vector. We'll go ahead and set our gravity vector to zero, zero. Now, if we rerun our game, and here we can see our crates. If we test for collisions, we can see that our tank layer, or our player layer, is properly colliding with our destructibles. However, the crates aren't colliding with the world. They just continue along their path. If we return to the editor, under our crate, expand our collision layer, so we can add the mask layer for the world as well as the destructibles. This will allow it to collide with itself as well as any of the walls within the world. Now if we rerun that scene, when we collide into a crate, the crate collides into itself and into a wall, it will stop. Now currently one of the problems we have with our crates is that they just continue sliding along. Back in the editor under our rigid body, we can modify angular and linear velocity by adding some dampening. We give this a one pixel X and Y as well as a hundred dampening. And for our angular, we'll also add a hundred dampening. Once we launch it again, you can see that our crates no longer slide. You can adjust this dampening force for your liking. Now that we've added simple collision detection, Let's also add interaction between our bullet and the rest of our scenes. We open up our bullet and start making some improvements to our bullet script. Under our bullets node panel, let's check for area detections. When an area is entered our scene, this is when the bullet is colliding with another area. In this case, we'll just delete the bullet. As for a rigid body, such as the crate or the tank, in those cases, we want to add a detection for a body that has entered. And here we can check if our body is a crate. We can call a function within that body, something like destroy. And for our bullet, we'll just cue that to be freed. Now back on our crate script, we can add a new function that we'll call destroy. For this, we'll also queue it to be freed. Now if we rerun, when we test fire, we can see that our bullets are being destroyed when they collide with the walls. And if we shoot the crates, they're also being destroyed. Next, we'll open up our crate scene again. And from here, we'll add some functionality to generate a new pickup whenever the crate is destroyed. Insert our destroy function. We'll create a new pickup. It'll be a part of a act scene that will instantiate. To do this, we'll export 
a pack scene for our pickup, call well, this pickup scene. This will be a type of packed scene. And here we can say that a pickup is a pickup scene that we've instantiated. This will return a type of pickup. We'll set the pickup position to be equal to our crates global position. And we'll get the crates parent and we will add a child to the pickup to that scene. Next, we'll need to set up it on our pickup. When it collides with the tank, when the body enters, if the body is a tank, and we are going to delete ourselves as a pickup. And if we select our crate scene under our inspector, we should have a new pickup scene up here where we can drag our pickup scene to that property. And when we rerun our scene, we destroy a crate, we have a typo. And if we correct that and rerun, destroy a crate, we can see we now have a pickup. And if we drive over it, we can now select our pickups. And there you go. Our tank now has walls that we can collide with, as well as crates that we can destroy and collide with. It will drop collectibles that we can pick up. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe, and you'll be notified of when we have future videos. And join us next time as we add a user interface to our game. Thank you for watching, and happy coding.